Hey, it's Jamie Scrimger. When I became a stepmom, I quickly realized that while moms are encouraged to keep it real, there's a big double standard when it comes to stepmoms. So I decided to start the conversation myself. Thriving as a stepmom doesn't just come from conversations about being a stepmom, though. Here, we dive into marriage, relationships, personal growth, and more. My mission? Inspire you to live a kick-ass life while bringing you along as I create my own. This is the Kick-Ass Stepmom Podcast. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Kick-Ass Stepmom Podcast. All right, so here is the deal. In the summertime, I usually take a little break from recording podcast episodes, but that did not feel right this year. So instead of taking six weeks off, like I usually do, I went back into the archives and I am sharing some of your favorite podcast episodes and a couple more that I feel deserve a little bit of a redo. So for the next six weeks, it's all about the reruns. I'm going to be back in mid-August with new episodes, but I want to leave you with these gems for now. Now, if you are looking for new content, new podcast episodes, new interviews with experts, and some stuff you haven't heard yet, I do release new content inside the Kick-Ass Stepmom community each month. Members get access to interviews with all the top experts, tell all podcast episodes with Darren and I that get a little spicy, and you can also listen in on coaching calls that I have with other stepmoms. Now, if you are looking to connect, there is a chat room where you can come say hi, ask me for advice, and connect with stepmoms from over 30 countries around the world. To join, head to www.kickassstepmom.com. And once you're all signed up, be sure to download the new Kickass Stepmom app available in the App Store. All right, let's dive in. You know what? Today is a really good episode. I am chatting with a fellow stepmom, Brooke Leslie. Some of you may recognize her as the struggling stepmom over on Instagram. She is a mom of two, a stepmom of two, a stepmom coach. And in this conversation, we really dove into our experiences as a stepmom, what we wish we knew, our advice for new stepmoms or someone dating someone with kids, personal growth as a stepmom, lessons we've learned along the way, our opinion on court and legal processes, what you really need to wrap your head around if you're going to commit to a life with someone who had kids from a past relationship. Here's the deal. If you are dating someone with kids, this episode is either going to equip you for a long and healthy relationship, or it's going to make you say, screw this. I'm not going to do it. But either way, we are here happy to support. I'm kidding. It won't make you say, screw this. But it actually might. We're just being like really real about what you need to understand before you commit yourself to this life. So let's get to this episode. So pumped to share it with you. Brooke, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I am so excited to chat with you today. I feel like I fell in love with you on Instagram. I was like, I find very few stepmoms online that I relate to. I, I'm like very honest about that. I just, it's a hard space, right? You have to find your people. The feeling is very mutual. You've, uh, your podcast has helped me through it. So I thank you. <laughs> well, yeah. And thanks for supporting the show and popping in my uh, inbox and letting me know all about you because I think, yeah, like I think it's really important to find those stepmoms online that you relate to and that you resonate with and that aren't about, you know, all the bitching and the complaining, even though sometimes there's a lot of stuff you can bitch and complain about. So with that, so glad we're doing this. Yeah, me too. I'm really been looking forward to it. So I'm so happy to be here. So for those who maybe aren't familiar with you yet, can you give us a bit of an intro on you and your step family dynamic and what you got going on? Yeah, I've um, been a stepmom for seven years now. I The kids are actually in Ontario and we're in Alberta. I first met them actually when they were, my stepson was one, my stepdaughter was three and their dad was engaged to their mom. So I met them all as a family and we were camping for a mutual friend's birthday. And actually my, their dad and I ended up in the pool playing with them together and their mom was taking a much needed break tanning. And uh, yeah, so I never, ever thought that we would end up together, but life happened. They split and I moved out to Alberta and then he moved out Shortly after we reconnected, we were partnered in our friend's wedding. And so then we both ended up out here, reconnected and fell in love. So now it's been seven years since we started dating, been married for almost six. 
The kids are still in Ontario, so they're out here for eight weeks in the summer and every other Christmas we get them this year. So I'm pretty excited about that. And my relationship with them is great. Yeah. And now we have a four-year-old and one-year-old boys as well. So it's going to be a full house. Yeah, that's amazing. So did they did they always live in Ontario together before? Yes. Yeah, we all actually are from Ontario. And then my husband was a teacher. So teaching out there is not an easy gig to get. So he had two kids to support. So he actually moved to Manitoba and worked on a reserve for a couple of years and then got a job out here. And yeah, and they're still there. So we we tried to get them, you know, how court goes. And so they've been there. Yeah, it's tough. But we get out a couple of times in between visits too. And we have, we FaceTime them at least three times a week. So we do what we can to make it work, you know? Yeah, no, I love it. I love that story. It's so crazy how you can look back on times when you maybe interacted with your partner before falling in love. And then you're like, wow, if we would have known we'd be husband and wife. Like I um, always laugh because there's a time I remember seeing my husband in the line to get into a bar and we have an age difference. And he was in the older line, like the over the hill line, the quicker line to get into the bar. And I was in university at the time. And I remember seeing him there. And I literally remember exactly what I was wearing. I was wearing a brown tube top and Abercrombie jeans. And like, he was wearing the whole thing. And then never would I have ever thought that we would get married. You know, it's just so funny. No. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I remember the first time I saw him too and thinking, wow, like that's one lucky lady. And, you know, just thinking they had such a cute family and they were all so sweet and yeah, did not ever see this coming, but I'm glad it did. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. So you started talking about your struggles and the ups and downs of stepmotherhood through a blog. So why did you decide to do that? Well, similar to you, I, when we were going through all the court stuff, I was looking for just somewhere to guide me and there was so much negativity and people just complaining and it's not helpful. So I started just writing to get it out and, you know, it helps me. I find it therapeutic and, and I hoped that maybe it would help somebody else. And then, yeah, shortly after I found your podcast and, you know, and then other people started surfacing that are, you know, have really helped to change the way you see things. Right. So I found just seeing like it's very discouraging to hear people continue to complain about it and it doesn't change your situation at all. So once, you know, I started listening to you and other positive stepmoms and started realizing that the change isn't going to happen in my family, that I need to change me and the way I'm seeing things and the way I'm viewing it. And that helped so much and it made me so much happier and it made my family happier. And so I just, I wanted to see if I could help some people too, you know, just give another story that works out. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. And I love that. And I think you're so right. You know, when I talk to stepmoms or when I'm doing coaching, it's like, well, they're doing this, the ex is doing that, or yeah, but she's doing that. And that's like, she's going to keep doing that. The kids are going to keep doing what they're doing. Like nothing is going to change. Right. So it's like, what are you going to do? Like what you have to focus on yourself. And I know some stepmoms get really frustrated with that piece because they're like, well, why is it all on me? Well, your life is on you, right? If they want change in their life, they're responsible for that change. But you're looking for change in your life, right? Like, and if this isn't working for you, then you have a choice too. And that always comes across as being harsh, but it's true. Like you know, we didn't know what we were signing up for. No we didn't know how hard this would be, but we still commit to it every day. Absolutely. And sometimes she's doing that or acting that way because you're doing this and acting this way, you know, and sometimes it's not even for me, I found even it bled into the kids, you know, if they, I remember making a bed with my stepdaughter once and I'm making the bed with her and I'm thinking we're having a great time and we're bonding and she's like, oh, like this is how my mom does it. And I just remember that hitting me you know, and I just wanted to shut down. I wanted to walk away and think, forget it. Like, and after, you know, some work and some thinking about myself, I truly believe she was just trying to connect with me. 
you know, and it was my insecurity about being compared to her mom or feeling like I'm being judged by her or when none of that was real. That was all me worrying about that and nothing to do with her mom, nothing to do with her. And once I started thinking, she's just trying to, you know, connect and tell me of a time that she's done this before and let go of that worry. And, you know, once I stopped judging and worrying that I was being judged, then it's made it so much easier to connect with my stepkids and stop living like, oh, everybody's watching me, you know, because nobody cares. They're not. And the people who do care and who are watching and who are judging, they're not the people that you really care about. You know, like it doesn't actually, and you're never going to change it. Yeah. And they're ne- you're never going to make them happy. If they're doing that, they want to make things, make problems that maybe aren't even there. So yeah, you can't worry about that. Yeah. 100%. And probably that's the only person she's seen make a bed. Yes, exactly. Right. Sometimes, sometimes we forget about that, right? We're like when, when our stepkids will say, well, my mom does it this way, or this is how we usually do it. It's like, they haven't learned that there's different ways to do different things. That's a conversation piece, right? And just being like, oh, that's interesting. How does your mom do it? Or, you know, even with like cookies or something, it's like, oh, well, my mom makes cookies this way. It's like, oh, okay, well, tell me about that. Like, I'm, just be interested in their life. Like they're actually just sharing part of your life. And if you are in a situation where your stepkid is like saying things to compare you to the mom, like in a way to make you feel bad, which I don't think is the case a lot of the time, but sometimes there definitely is that, you know, spiteful situation. Don't let them know it bothers you. Let them feel like they're free to just share their life, right? And be like, oh, cool. Express interest. Because if you let them know that it bugs you, they're going to keep doing it. And I'm telling you that as a child of divorce, he used to get rid of my dad's girlfriends for sport. Like you can't let them know that it's bugging you or they're going to keep doing it because that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. And it gets the way in the way of you connecting with them too to behave like that. Like, it's just, yeah, it's not helpful. It's never going to help you. And I've found that my life has been, yeah. Cause even if you're talking, if we were talking and you told me about a time you went to Jamaica, then if I was like, Oh, I went there with my husband, you wouldn't be like, Oh, your husband, you know? I want to tell you something. There was a time in my life when I would never spend money on pajamas. I don't even think I really had pajamas. I wanted to invest my funds into things that I would wear outside of the house. When I had to buy my first sheet set, I did not understand why someone would invest in anything but the least expensive sheets possible. That was me in my early 20s. Now that I'm in my late 30s, I realized just how wrong that was. Investing in bedding and loungewear and pajamas makes all the sense in the world. My go-to, as you know, is Cozy Earth. From their PJs to their loungewear to their temperature-regulating sheets made from bamboo viscose, Cozy Earth has helped me level up my quality of sleep and how I feel when I'm in lounge mode. The first thing that I do when I get home is either switch into a cozy bamboo jogger set or right into my PJs. Sleeping in my duvet cover and sheet set made from the premium viscose bamboo is like a freaking dream. Temperature-regulating sheets are definitely the move. It is no surprise that Cozy Earth has made Oprah's favorite things several years in a row. Their products are next level, and these are the softest clothes that I own. Right now, I'm actually in the process of going through all of my clothes and purging things that don't make me feel or look right. And most of my loungewear is out. I'm all about the Cozy Earth. The best part of the loungewear is that it just doesn't look sloppy. You can totally go out of the house and look completely put together. I even wore a set recording podcast last week. Now, Cozy Earth has given listeners of the podcast 40% off any purchase with the code CozyJamie40. That's CozyEarth.com and use the code CozyJamie40 for 40% off. www.CozyEarth.com and use the code CozyJamie40 for 40% off. Okay, guys, I absolutely love sharing products that I am obsessed with. And one of the big things that I am all about when I'm working with a brand is that I'm not going to share anything that I wouldn't share with my best friends. And I've been telling all of my friends about Osea. So I was using Osea skincare for a while there, and then I ran out and I didn't place an order to renew it. And then life just happened. And so I didn't have it for a few months. And then I was looking at my skin. I'm like, what is going on? I really noticed the difference. My skin was just blah. So I just restocked on the body butter, the algae body oil, and the collagen boosting moisturizer. 
and my legs and my body are thanking me for it. So specifically the collagen body lotion, it's ultra hydrating, it is lightweight and scientifically proven to visibly firm skin in just four hours. No joke, it does. And when I hydrate, I just really want my skin to feel dewy and moisturized and firm and soft and it does all of that stuff. Pack with clinically proven ingredients, including vegan collagen, hyaluronic acid to deliver lasting hydration and radiant and revitalized skin. Osea is literally the best. And the body butter and the oils, it's just like such a treat for your skin. In fact, I just add the salts of the sea body scrub and the body polish to my cart. Used to have them, didn't restock, and it's just such a great way to exfoliate your skin just get your skin prepped for summer because we are about to go into bathing suit season and I want my skin to look good, dewy and moisturized. So if that feels aligned for you, I recommend going to oseamalibu.com and using the code kickassstepmom10 for 10% off your first order. That's www.oseamalibu.com and use the code kickassstepmom10 for 10% off your order. For 27 years, Osea has been on a mission to create clean, seaweed-infused skincare that respects the natural world and makes skin look and feel its absolute best. And I don't know about you, but whenever I'm trying to find clean skincare, I often feel like I have to sacrifice the effects. Like it doesn't work that well. Osea, it's not like that. Today it's called Clean Beauty, but Osea has been doing this since the beginning. Their products have been infused with seaweed because it's rich in vitamins, minerals, and nutrients and have endless benefits from the ocean. Again, you have to go check out all of the amazing products on their site, I listed a few of my faves, but there are so many from skincare to hair products to body scrubs. There are so many amazing products to choose from. Osea really does have you covered for clean, vegan, and cruelty-free skincare products. So go to oseamalibu.com and use the code kickassstepmom10 for 10% off your first order. Now you talked about being in court and just having that long drawn out court battle. So obviously that's a really stressful situation. Can you share any tips and strategies that you had to cope with that process? Because it's long, it's expensive, it is draining, it is really consuming. Yes. For me, if I could go back, I would have gone straight to mediation and tried that first without a lawyer or, and don't get caught up in trying to win you know, and thinking that you're doing what's best for the kids because a court battle isn't best for the kids and you fighting and nitpicking everything the mom's doing and then having the mom do the same to you is stressing out both homes and the kids will feel that. So I don't think, obviously there are times you have to go and you have to do that, but in the end, it's just not worth it if you're, you're trying to beat her or you're trying to win you know because it's nobody's gonna win so and the only people who really win are the lawyers like I even in our situation sometimes I say to say to my husband like man like if we could just have a conversation absolutely right if we could just have a conversation without the back and forth of the lawyers and the lawyers chiming in on things like yeah you definitely need legal advice but I do think sometimes the lawyers are making matters worse and it shouldn't cost $300 $300 to respond to a request. You know what I mean? Because that's what a lawyer's letter ends up costing at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And you really get no further ahead most days. So yeah, it's not, it's not. My, I had a neighbor that he's a bio dad and they went to court and he wanted 50 50. And he did not hire a lawyer, didn't fight with her, just, you know, she hired a lawyer spent $30,000 to end up with 50-50 and he went and bought himself a Porsche. (laughs) Well, yeah, it's so much freaking money. Like think about the cost of education and what our kids are going to need to go to school or whatever they want to do. And then double check yourself and see, is this something that I want to spend the money on? Because, oh my gosh, it really gets expensive. And I do think there are times when you need the lawyer to represent you, but you can get to a point where it's like, okay, does this really matter, right? Like, is this about winning or losing at this point? And 
you know, I was saying to my husband the other day, I'm like, man, I don't even care. Like let's, who cares who wins or loses at this point? Like, what do we have to do to get this off of our plate? Like what, what do we have to do to not have this burden on us? Because it's draining and it's a very lack mindset too, when you're constantly fighting and and that shows up in all areas of your life. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it gets both sides fired up. Right. So then if you think you're being watched now and you think you're walking on eggshells now, just go to court (laughs) and get involved in all of that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Did you have to go through the Ontario court system? Yes. Yeah. And that's a long, I'm sure it's the same out, out West, but it's just like how many case conferences and settlement conferences can you have before someone makes a decision? Yeah. And then flights back, you know, like, yeah. So it was terrible and, but I'm glad it's over and I'll never go back unless, you know, absolutely necessary, but yeah, you're like, we'll never go back unless you leave me, honey. (laughs) No, I'm just joking. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Well, he always jokes that if something ever happened with us, he'd be so far off the grid, I'd never find him again. Well, I always say to Darren, I'm like, you can't do it. Like, what, what are you going to do? Like, how long are you going to be mad at me about this? You can't afford another ex-wife. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so funny. Now you have a blog post where you talk about things that you need to consider. You need to know if you are dating someone with kids, let's dive into that because I, I do think actually, interestingly enough, that's my, I have a blog post where it's a, I don't know, it's like 16 things or something you need to know if you're dating a man with kids. It's my most searched blog post. Like I wrote it four years ago and it still brings the most traffic to my website. Cause I think all of these women are dating recently divorced men and are like, okay, how do I, how do I do this? Yeah. It's, I wish I looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> I am a stepdaughter too. I have a stepdad. He's been in, but stepdads, it's just different. So different. So what do you wish you would have known? Like, what do you think that if you are dating someone with kids right now, what do you need to know? I wish I had known that their mom wasn't going to be sitting there waiting to meet me and all excited to be my friend. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like there's this like really fairytale perception of what it's going to be when you meet the ex or if you meet the ex of the type of relationship you, you may have. And why is she going to be excited to meet me? There's no reason for her to want me. So it, it doesn't make sense, but yeah, I was, I was really looking forward to that friendship. It was going to be great. Yeah. Not so good. No. (laughs) Yeah. How's that going for you? (laughs) All right. Actually let's do, let's go back and forth. So let's say like different things that we wish we would have known. So I think that you need to know, like they have kids. And I know that, you know, they have kids, but it's like, no, they have kids. Like, and these kids aren't going away and your whole life is dictated by these kids. Like that's, you're not dating just a man, you're dating a man with kids. Yes. 100%. Yeah. I think people don't fully wrap their heads around what that looks like because it seems really cute and amazing at the very beginning. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay. Kids are a lot of work. There's like hockey practices. There's the back and forth. There's all the responsibilities. There's the financial piece. Like they have kids. Yeah, that's that's a big one. Okay, you go. I probably would have liked to know that. Well, I think just to what you were saying is that the child support isn't going away and it will likely become more money to go. And that's not something that's ever going to change. And there's no nothing you can do about that. I mean, I want him paying child support. I would not be proud of a man who didn't pay for his children. But I think that the fact that you have no control over where that money goes is a hard thing to swallow, you know? Yeah. So you're going to have to just accept that. (laughs) Preach it. The child support system is not fair. It is not fair. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? This is interesting. So Darren was saying that he thinks... Oh, this is a really good idea. I always think Darren should be a politician or like a a lawmaker, a rule maker, because he comes up with some pretty good ideas. But he was saying how he thinks that each family, so if you're getting a divorce, like before you go into the court system, you get assigned a caseworker who can help you come in and create a plan based on your unique circumstance, like what's fair for you and your circumstance. Like obviously there'd still be, you know, the guidelines for calculating child support and doing all of that kind of stuff. But because so many situations are different, right? And the reason why I think the legal system is so unfair is because they have to take all of these scenarios and kind of make a plan that works for everyone, which actually doesn't. So wouldn't that be good? Yeah, that'd be amazing. Like you just have your caseworker. And then they could actually see the way things are going and what is 
truly best for the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, I always wish we could like, you know, pay the child support in gift cards to grocery stores or, (laughs) yeah, you know, or in kids clothing or, you know, just something. But Anyway, it is what it is. So my next one would be, you need to understand your life is going to be dictated by a legal agreement that you had no part in creating. Even if you do have a part in creating it, it's still like everything, like every holiday schedule. If you want to go on a vacation, if you want to do anything really with the kids, it needs to be, it needs to abide by that agreement, whether you think it's fair or not. Yes, I agree. That's a tough one. Because I don't know, I always think that people need to have a really strict agreement and a really detailed agreement just because if there's arguments or if things come up, then you have something to default back to. But wouldn't it be so nice to just book a family vacation without having to check the agreement or look at your schedule? Like my calendar right now, like every other week it says kids, no kids, kids, no kids. And I always have to go and like even Darren has to book all of his meetings based on when we have the kids, not so much now that they're older. Yeah. I think that a lot of stepmoms don't, or, or if you're dating someone with kids, they don't fully understand what that's like. Yeah. And then when they get into the situation, they want to fight it. When it's like, no, this literally is what it is. And it's even like, it gets, and to your point, the child, the agreement, ours says reasonable visitation when we fly there in between. What's that even mean? To me, hmm, to me, I think reasonable is if we're going for a week, we can have the kids for a week after we haven't seen them in months. Hard now. That's not necessarily reasonable on both sides. So every time it's a long drawn out process. Yeah. So that like looking back, would you have had something more detailed? Yes, I think. Yes, absolutely. I wish we had written. We can have them 100% of the time as long as we give this much notice and it's less than two weeks, you know? Yeah. Something, just something. And I think that would be reasonable. If they don't have anything else going on, we tell them six months ahead of time. What is reasonable even, right? Like that's such a vague word because what I think is reasonable might not be even what my husband thinks is reasonable or Mm -hmm. what their mom thinks is reasonable. That's a terrible statement in an agreement. (laughs) It's awful. I hate it. It is the worst. And so my next one would be that there's guilt or you feel torn when it comes to when you have your own kids and there's a whole learning process about what, you know, getting family photos. If your stepkids aren't there, you're going to be torn thinking about that or going and taking your biological kids to something when you don't have your stepkids and having them miss that. Mm -hmm. You know, there it's it complicates that. Everything. Yes. Everything is complicated. How do you do that? Well, we get we get family photos every summer when the kids are here. Mm-hmm. So, but then we got, there was a circumstance in September. The baby, my youngest was a baby. He was a couple months old. And it was like a donate to a children's hospital and you get a free photo shoot. The big kids weren't here. And I was like, oh, I never want them to see these pictures, you know, and I just felt so. But then I was, they're getting pictures with their mom and life goes on and, Mm -hmm. you know, but there's just so much more to think about than just, you know, and even to, you know, I'm a boy mom, but I'm not, you know. Oh, yeah. Can you even say you're a boy mom? Because you don't want to. Yeah. Exclude my stepdaughter you know, and all of that is just, but then, but then if you said you were, so if you said you were, here's something where it's tricky. If you said you were a boy mom, you would be wrong because you're not just a boy mom. Cause you have a stepdaughter. But if you said you were a girl mom, like, or you're a mom of, of a girl, then you could also be crucified because you don't. Cause I'm not, I'm not her mom. She's not your biological daughter. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So there's the next one. You're damned. If you do, you're damned. If you don't like someone is always going to think that you're doing the right thing, wrong thing. So if you're too involved, you are overstepping and not respecting the role of the mom. But if you're not involved enough then you're not taking your role seriously, and you must not even like your kid, your stepkids anyway. So you can never be right. Yes, absolutely. There's always somebody waiting to judge you. Yeah. There's always that. And then I think that is getting better. I do think that like the, Oh yeah. We really are changing the conversation about step family life and like normalizing that because the stigma that I felt when I first became a stepmom versus like where I'm at now, maybe it's because no one says anything to me because they know I don't care anymore. Or maybe it's not there. I don't know. Or maybe I'm just more confident and not as sensitive to that pressure. 
but it really is something at the beginning. Oh, it's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Okay. What are the other things that I wish I would have known? Do you feel bad when you do those photo shoots? Like, do you guys have conversations about it with the kids or sorry, just to go back on that? No. Yeah, no, we never, that was the only time that it happened. We never told them about it, but then my mother-in-law, the kids were at her house and she's like, oh yeah, look at this picture and showed them. And I was like, (gasps) and I did, I felt terrible. I was like, oh, and I felt the need to explain myself and that, you know, like, and I'm sure they didn't care. They're like, oh, one less photo shoot we have to sit through, you know, like, it's not like it's the thrill of their life to get pictures taken, but yeah, anything that makes, you know, I just never want them to feel like life's going on. Like we didn't want them there, you know, like, Mm -hmm. because of course I want them there but it's just, it's unrealistic. They're not always here. Yeah. Reese and I, every year, actually, we didn't do it this year. Yeah. I don't know why we didn't do it this year. I think life just happened, but every year we would do a photo shoot on mother's day. So just Reese and I, and it's just always been our tradition. And I, it was really important to me to have that because I just, yeah, I, we, her and I have a special relationship that is different than the relationship that I have with my stepkids. And for the longest time, I felt so guilty saying that. Mm -hmm. right? Because there's this pressure that you're supposed to love your stepkids like they're your own. And yeah, I love them so much. And yeah, you know, they're my people and all those things, but there is a different relationship that I have with Reese because I'm Reese's mom. Mm -hmm. I'm not their mom. They have a mom. So they have that mother, daughter, mother, son relationship with her. And I have it with Reese, right? I'm their stepmom. So I have a different relationship with them because yeah. And that's a really hard thing for people to understand. I think especially partners who really expect their new wife to come in and love their stepkids the exact same way. It's almost like they want to just like slot you into a role. Yeah. And they don't understand. And I think something for stepmoms that to learn that you can love your stepkids like they're your kids, but they're not going to love you like you're their mom because they have a mom. And that's something that's important to realize because it's hurtful when you're putting all this love into them and then you're not getting it back the same way. So I think it's important to not love them fully like they're your own because you're going to get hurt and you're just going to keep getting hurt every time you're reminded that you're not their mom. So, and there's nothing wrong with having a stepmother, stepchild relationship. There's no, it doesn't have to be less than, it's just different. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of stepmoms get kind of tripped up, right? Because they think they're supposed to be the mom and be the mom in this relationship and be the mom to these kids. And then when they're not treated back like that mom, they feel hurt. Mm -hmm. It hurts. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to just separate stepmoms and moms. Like we're all motherly figures, Mm -hmm. but we're different in a lot of the situations. Yeah. And that's when we keep competing to be the mom because we're loving them like they're ours and we want to be the mom. And that's when the competition comes that's when the hurt comes. That's when so many struggles come from that. And it's not worth it because Mm -hmm. it's just not the same. And there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't need to be, we don't need to fit the mom role. We're fitting the stepmom role. And that's a huge thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And that, you know, there's another thing that I'd like to point out. That's something that you get to decide what looks like for your family. Mm -hmm. It's too, like, like there's, there's no, way to go about that, that is right for everyone. Like everyone needs to decide. So the way that I'm a stepmom in my home could look very different than the way that you're a stepmom in your home. Actually it does, right? Like we have the kids every other week. So I'm probably involved in more day-to-day stuff than you are. However, when they're there with you, you may have a completely different relationship than I do. And I think that's really important to remember because we, we get kind of tripped up thinking, Hey, it's kind of like a mom role or a stepmom should do this, or a good stepmom shouldn't do this. When there's so many moving parts, like how the kids have reacted, how the kids are to you, how their mom has responded to you, the dynamic between mom and dad, how they feel about their dad, how that, like, you know what I mean? There's so many contributing factors Mm -hmm. that you can't just have this expectation about what a role of a stepmom should or shouldn't look like. Yeah. And that's what I think is so unfair for stepmoms, because in what world is every mom the same, you know? Every mom doesn't, you know, some moms are really focused on their career and have nannies and they only see their kids and that's fine. They're, you know, working to give their kids a great life. Or there's moms that take their kids on cruise ships and homeschool them and live on a boat, you know, like every family is different and it doesn't have to be bad or good. 
you know, it's just different and the kids are different. And yeah, and there's so much out of our control that we had nothing to do with in the first place that it's even we're not starting from the beginning. So 100%. Do you think that step moments, we just put a lot of pressure on ourselves and kind of make things, make up stressors that maybe don't exist? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I do that all the time. All the expectations I had when I first became a stepmom definitely set me way back. Like had I not, you know, when I became a, I've always loved kids. So I had no problem with the kids. They were three and six and my stepdaughter crawled into my lap the first time I met her and told me I was going to be her new mommy. So no pressure. Yeah, that was, yeah. Well, that was my first conversation. Like, oh, geez. Okay. Well, how am I going to handle that? So yeah, but yeah, coming in, like expecting that everything's just going to run so smoothly and they're just going to take to me and I'm going to be their mom and, you know, and I'm going to love them and they're going to love me back and it's all going to be, and then their mom's going to think I'm the best and we're going to be best friends. (laughs) Like, Ugh, it's just too much pressure because then you don't anticipate the feelings when all of that isn't, it, they're people. These are all people that you're dealing with. And every, you know, my stepdaughter wouldn't text me back and then I'd be hurt by that. And then I'd be like, oh, it's probably because her mom's not letting her. What? Or maybe she's a kid and just got distracted. And then I asked her about it once and she's like, well, you didn't ask me anything. They're not texters, eh, kids? No. And what is she? She's got so many other things to work. Like you should Snapchat her. Yeah. yeah, Well, she's better now, but she, uh, like when I was a kid, I remember my mom being like, come to the phone and say hi to your aunt. Like, yeah, really? They don't want to, you know? Yeah. No, they're kids. They want to play and they want to have fun and they want to watch their show or they want to talk to their friends. Like you are a mom figure. You're not exciting to her. So get over it. Yeah. You know, like totally. And it's just all the things that you take personally and think that they're these little masterminds out to hurt you. Like they're not, you're just expecting things that are unfair. They're children. Since red light therapy has become all the rage, I have been dying to get my hands on a red light therapy professional mask. And I recently was able to make that happen. So I've been using the Val Flurry professional LED mask and I am, I'm loving it. I've become super invested in doing what I can to keep my skin feeling tight and healthy and smooth. You know, I'm coming up on 38 and red light therapy has become a regular part of my regime. So here's the deal. The Val Flurry Professional LED Mask is medical grade light therapy proven to enhance your natural skin. So the mask emits three clinically proven wavelengths of red yellow and blue that penetrates deep into the skin. So it stimulates collagen production. It diminishes fine lines and wrinkles. It reduces the signs of sun damage and aging and just promotes healthier, younger looking skin. The mask has settings for red, blue, and yellow light, which is unreal. So you can just like switch the light with a click of the button. So the red light therapy reduces fine lines and wrinkles, reduces the appearance of pigmentation and redness, and just promotes healthier, younger looking skin. Then the yellow light therapy rejuvenates skin cells, smooths inflamed skin, boosts lymphatic flow, and promotes anti-aging. And then the blue light improves skin texture, helps remove sunspots and acne, and even scars that were originally caused by acne. So it's kind of like a three-in-one. There's no downtime. You just do a 10-minute treatment for three to five times every week for about four to six weeks, and then just follow maintenance as desired. I'm already starting to see a difference. I have also been using the 360 LED skin care wand. So like picture just like a little wand that you put on your skin. And this has actually been my favorite. So the skincare wand combines four science-backed skincare treatments in one. And it's this portable rechargeable tool. So if you're traveling, you can just bring it. No big deal. Super easy. So it has red light therapy, a current facial massage and therapeutic warmth. So I've been putting it under my eyes and you can just kind of go back and forth on your problem areas in just three minutes. And this addresses fine lines, puffiness, blemishes, dark circles, dull skin and maturing skin. 
So Val Fleury is giving listeners of the Kick-Ass Stepmom podcast a 20% off their order, which is huge. So if you go to www.valfleuryskin.com, that's www.valfleuryskin.com and use the code Jamie20 at checkout, you can get 20%. I highly recommend adding the LED face mask and wand into your skincare regime, www.valfleuryskin.com and use the code Jamie20 at checkout for 20% off. What did you used to think was a big deal that isn't? Like something you used to like make a big deal about or stress out over and now you're like, whatever, screw it. I think the that's not how my mom does it situation or thinking that she was watching me or worried, you know, like I would try so hard to make sure everything was perfect. They're not going back and telling her anything like and there's nothing to tell, you know, just letting go of the fact that I think that everything needs to be perfect or that they are comparing me because they're not. That's not they're trying to build a relationship with me and that's just between me and them. And it doesn't have to be once I started, you know, just viewing our relationship as a unique relationship and not a side by side, it became a lot stronger. And I really felt that we were loving each other once I let go of that. Yeah. When I let go of trying to be the perfect stepmom, I was always like thought that people cared, like if they were dressed right and everyone's hair was brushed and, you know, everyone was matching and we all had the perfect holiday stuff or we the perfect traditions or I made the great appetizer for the event that we were going to. And it was just like put on this this pressure myself to just be perfect all the time and to like show that n- nothing was wrong. Like nothing was ever hard for us. And as soon as I took that pressure off myself, the vibe of our household changed. Like I wasn't all strung out trying to make sure everything was on routine and bedtime was the right way. And we had everything all together. It's like, yeah, we got a little bit more unorganized, but life just felt a lot more easygoing. Right. But Again, that goes back to that insecurity that stepmoms will have, thinking that they need to have it all together and that people are judging them. And again, yeah, I I do hate when people are like, no one's thinking about you all. No one's judging you. Yes, some people are. (laughs) Some people judge you. Some people are talking shit about you. That's actually true. But they're not the people you need to care about, right? No, and and they're doing that for their own reasons. It has nothing to do with you anyway. Like, it, yeah, it shouldn't. Well, I mean, it does affect us. For sure it does. But you have to try to tune it out. But- Yeah, no. And the kids don't care if your family looks perfect or they'd so much rather have you be happy and just be you. And then, oh, Jamie's on again. Like, let's get out of the way, you know? Yeah, dishes aren't done. It's uncomfortable. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Jamie's pissed about all the shoes at the front door. That used to be my big thing. There's freaking shoes. Oh my gosh. No. When I heard that, my stepdad used to hate the shoes. And he'd put your shoes in the closet, put shoes in the closet. Like he never said much about anything really. Like my mom was always the one, but the shoes, he hated that. And so when you said that, I laughed so hard and I actually sent it to him because he, he got to a point where when we were older and we would still leave all our shoes at the front door, he would take them and throw them in the closet, but like throw one way over here and one down here. So when I was always late, I'm running out to go to work and I can't find my shoes and then I'd be mad. So now we're both mad. Right. Because so I thought that was hilarious. I think that's like a pretty common step parent thing. Well, I think as a stepmom or a new stepmom, I came in and I just was used to only my own mess. And that's something you need to understand, too. Actually, here's a tip for someone who's starting to date someone with kids or a new stepmom. You need to get friends who have kids or do a little research on what's age appropriate, because I just didn't think that you were going to have to tell kids over and over and over again to do the same thing. I truly just thought you would have to tell them once. And then they would just do it. And then Darren would say to me, well, Jamie, you have to talk to, like, you have to say it a couple of times sometimes. Like, kids aren't just, like, going to do it right away. Like, that's just very age appropriate. And I was like, well, if I had raised them from the beginning, they would have known. And they would have, no, no, you should see Reese. Like, Reese is, like, my mom said, Reese is my karma. (laughs) Like, she doesn't, she doesn't just do it right away, right? And I think it's important to realize what's normal for kids. Like it's normal for kids to have to be told a million times. It's normal for kids to put their granola bar wrappers in the couch. Like a lot of kids just hide their wrappers. Like that is normal, right? It's normal to have to remind them to put their backpack away and empty their lunch thing. Like it's normal. And 
those are huge stressors for stepmoms because they're like, I already told you, why do I have to tell you a hundred times? It's like, well, they're kids. Yeah. And the, if I had been there and raised them, let that go. Because when you are there and you are raising them, you're like, Ooh. You're, you're like, yeah, actually. I, now, now I'm like, oh, my stepkids never did this to my biological kids. I was a really good parent until I had kids. <laughs> Absolutely. 100%. And I think that's the same for most of us. So, you know, what's really funny is that I actually, before I was with Darren, I, before I was in child protection, so I was a CIS worker who would do the child protection investigations and, and all of that. But when I first started with the agency, I was, I would, it was called family support. So I was actually the person who would go into the home, like kind of like, remember that super nanny show to help you implement structure and routine. So there I was like 23 years old, looking like I'm 16, no kids, never babysat before, zero experience with kids, telling parents how to be consistent. What a joke. <laughs> like I thought I knew everything for raising kids. And then all of a sudden I was a stepmom. I was like, whoa, actually, this is not how I thought it would be. Humbling. Yeah. And I, I worked with kids like for years when I was younger, I worked in daycares and babysat my whole life. And when I had my stepkids, I think this is something important for new stepmoms. They went upstairs and they're just running upstairs and their feet. I'm like, they're going to fall through the roof. Like, and then they're jumping on the furniture and they're just, it all felt so chaotic and like, they're going to destroy our house, you know? And I think starting to learn that your stuff is no longer your stuff and it's probably going to get ruined. And if there are things that are important, make that very clear that this is a no kids area because it, and you know, I wasn't new to children, but holy, when they were in my house and like, I just felt like there's so much chaos all of a sudden, you know, and excited kids feel like a lot in the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Especially when you're tired especially when you're tired. I'm pretty introverted and I like quiet. I actually struggle with Reese because she's an extrovert mm -hmm. and she always likes to be doing stuff and always likes to be goofing around and running and playing and all the things. I'm like, why don't we just sit down and see how long we can be quiet? Like, want to do a competition, right? And that's always been something that I've really struggled with, especially with the noise and the chaos, right? Like, that's not something I love ever as an introvert. And, you know, you need to, you need to get your own safe space and be totally okay with taking that time. That's another thing, actually, that I, I love that we're just like rhyming off these things, these things that come to our mind as advice. You're welcome, new stepmoms. I hope you're taking notes. Is that it's okay to take time for yourself. And we often, as stepmoms at the very beginning, have this pressure that we want to be involved in everything. And we feel like when we have the kids, we have to be with the kids and just to show that you're committed and all of that which is great. But if you feel like you don't want to go to something, you don't have to go to every hockey game. You don't have to be at every pickup and drop off. You don't have to be like, if they're downstairs watching TV and doing something with their other parent, you can go upstairs and read a book. Like you don't have to be on all the time. And if you feel like you're being like you're depleted or just need a break, take the break. Cause it's going to make you a way better stepmom in the long run. And you need it. Yeah. And you actually shouldn't be there all the time because the kids do need time with their other parent alone without you, you know? And so, yeah, don't feel guilty about it. Do it. Feel like you're doing them a favor because it's a good thing for them to have that. And I also think it's important to, I always make an effort to, well, my husband and I both make an effort to take each one of the kids when they're here out and do something for them that they pick we go do it alone. My Well, my husband kind of picks for them. They go on a hike with him, but I let them decide what they want to do. And my stepson always picks lunch, bowling and ice cream. And my stepdaughter, we usually go get manicures this year. We got facials because she's turned to a teenager. So, and I think it's nice to have that time to let them know that you care to know them. And obviously this is going to be different for people who don't have that relationship, but I've, it's worked for me. And I love doing it and they seem to enjoy it. So, but yeah, I think it's important to, you know, give them the space to, to just be with their other parent. You got to take the pressure off, right? Take the, take the pressure off and don't go all in at the very beginning. Cause if you go all in, no, did you go all in? 100%. So did I. Yeah. 
<laughs> so we can speak from experience. I was like all in doing all the things, slap myself into all the motherly roles. Like I was commuting back and forth. I was in the car three hours a day, still had a great dinner on the table. Everyone was super organized as doing all the things. And then I got really mad one day and I was like, I gave up everything for all you people. <laughs> yeah. I do everything. And Darren's like, Hey, no one asked you to, like, you just started doing it. What did you want me to do? <laughs> I was like, yeah, actually you're right. That's was my fault. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, don't start slow, you know? And obviously I didn't. And it's so hard because you're like, Oh, I'm going to be a mommy and we're going to do all these things and I'm going to have a family and it's so exciting. And yeah, but then you get hooked and you get stuck doing the things that you never asked for, but you kind of did because you started doing it all. You started doing it and no one expect no one's going to be like, oh, I should do the dishes today because when I've been doing the dishes all the time. So no one knows that all of a sudden I've decided I've had enough. Like if I've done it every single day, like I've created that habit and that expectation, right? And then like you start doing all the things and then you freaking snap and everyone's looking at you like, whoa, what is wrong? But all of this stuff is like building up and that's where the resentment comes from. So don't go all in and do all the things. And if you, st if you did and you made the mistake and you're starting to feel a little bit of resentment, just ask for help, right? Like, and don't assume that anyone is reading your mind because no one is. You have to ask for what you want. You have to ask for what you need. Yes. And you have to approach it in not a, you know, I've been doing everything for all of you and nobody does anything back. You know, like you need to get calm. I'm good enough until I'm not. I, no one appreciates me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Doing all the mom stuff, but nobody treats me like that. Yeah. I'm a glorified babysitter. Shoot. People are probably going to break up with their boyfriend if they're dating someone with kids after <laughs> listening to this. 100%. I mean, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> oh, the other thing is to know, like the X is not going away. Yes. The X is not going away. So you really need to wrap your head around that. Like that is a situation. And even after they're 18, you're still going to have to deal with them at weddings or anything like that. Like the X is not going away. So you need to really wrap your head around that. Yeah. And you need to accept it because it's not like my parents, when I got married, they hadn't spoken in I don't know how long. And they actually like got together to pay for our wedding. Oh, they came together physically? Well, they were emailing, but yeah, they like, and to me, that was huge because I remember when I was younger, my dad coming to pick us up and like if my stepdad was even there. I was like, let's get out of here. And I don't want that for my stepkids. Obviously they do feel awkward. I asked my stepdaughter about it once, but because I was always like, Oh, if they have a function, let's all do lunch. Let's all like get together. And I asked my stepdaughter once because it occurred to me that I would have hated that. And I was like, do you love it when everybody's together? Like, do you feel super awkward? And she's like, oh, it's the worst. Yeah, fair enough. I'm going to stop pushing that because <laughs> they don't even want it. So no, for sure. We, you know, we did some joint stuff for graduations before, like we would all get together before. And then things got a little sour. And one more kid had to graduate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was just awkward, like so awkward. And I look back, like when I was getting married, my biggest stressor was my parents, mm -hmm. like navigating my parents, which was actually so unfair, right? Like you never want to put your kids in that situation. No. But there was like a whole thing. My dad was like, please do not make me sit beside your mom. I do not want to be sitting beside your mom at the ceremony. We had to have four tables at the front trying to get them all as close and good view because we have two divorced parents. And we're like, oh, we don't want to put them all at the same table, like, or any of them at the same table. So it's like, mm -hmm. we'll get this. So my, so my dad was like, I don't want to sit beside your mom. So I had my dad, the first row, then my mom, the second row. Well, then my mom and my aunt, cause my aunt was marrying us. Someone along the lines changed that seating plan. And it was like a rehearsal dinner or a rehearsal night. And that had been changed. And I had been told that that was changed from whoever. I was just like so mad. My dad's coming out to me being like, what's going on? I was like, man, like, mm -hmm. why? Right? Like, why does this have to be such a big deal? But I think that's really important for people who have kids who are getting older too, to remember is like, you don't want their wedding or their big events into their adulthood to be about that awkwardness. 
No. And you want, so I think that you should, you need to accept that she'll always be a part of your life and stop pushing it to be something that it's not, you know, because that just creates more, like every time that I'm expect that, oh, we're talking, we're going to be friends, you know, and then it's just frustrating you know? Well, and you set yourself up to be disappointed, right? And I think I did that the same. I really wanted to have a certain type of relationship, but you know, when you let go of those expectations, sometimes it's, it takes the pressure off, right? Cause that's, it's a lot of pressure to force a type of relationship or to have to work on a type of relationship that isn't working and not everyone wants. Yeah. And I think also that you need to be real with yourself about what your feelings are, because your odds are I mean, if it hasn't worked by now, you're wanting to be friends with somebody that she's not, and you're not accepting her for who she is either. So it's just, you know, my relationship with her is civil. We're friendly when we see each other, but we're not friends. And that's fine. And I want to keep it that way, because if we became friends, who's to say there wouldn't be a blowout and then things would be twice as bad, you know? So having a business like relationship with her where we're polite and we talk when we need to and we can you know, work things through is going to work for me way more than me keep trying to be something that we're not and that I probably wouldn't want anyway. So yeah, being realistic, like, yeah, I just did a really good interview with my friend Joanna actually. And so she has, she's been divorced now for two years and uh, we've been just kind of like hashing out talking about that. And she was saying from her perspective, she has no desire to be friends with any stepmom figure like that. She's like, I don't need to communicate. And I think that's important. Like, I think as stepmoms, we come in and we're like, well, we want to have this type of relationship. We want to have this type of relationship with the ex, with the kids and all of that. And we have to remember they, most people here didn't actually want us to come. Like we are not welcomed guests. This is, wasn't in anyone's five-year plan. And there's a lot of emotions and there's a lot of processing that has to happen in order to have those relationships in People do that at different times and some people don't do it at all. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So yeah, definitely people are going to break up with their partners after listening to this episode because we're like, here you go. It's actually really good. I do think, you know, you've talked about the personal development piece and how much work you've had to do on yourself since being, becoming a stepmom. And I, I do think that's the best thing for me. Like, yeah, I love the kids. I love our family. It's been hard, but it's, you know, we've had a lot of really great times together and I'm very privileged to be in their, these kids' lives. I've also grown so much as a person and I don't think I would have had this much personal growth and involvement, evolvement, evolution. I don't even know what the word is there, but you know what I mean? I really attribute that to a lot of the lessons that I have learned as a stepmom. I couldn't agree more. I think that being a stepmom has really made me see myself and where my insecurities are and what I need to work on. And yeah, for sure it would have been, I mean, who knows what would have happened had I not met my husband, but I don't think that I would have seen all of that had I not been put in these situations where I kind of had no choice but to either self-destruct or get right with myself, you know, like it is hard, but it is so I wouldn't change it. If I could go back and start from the beginning, I wouldn't change it because the best thing I think for stepmoms is that you get to know what kind of father you're marrying. And a lot of people don't have that until they have babies. And then that can be a huge issue for some couples, right? Because they expect that they're going to be some type of parent and then their partner is going to be some type of parent. And then you may not see eye to eye. So you already know what you're getting into that way. So, Mm -hmm. and I also think you don't get a honeymoon phase, right? Like, and I think I have a blog post on this as well. Just saying, you know, those first years are freaking hard. It really is hard. And you dive into some really challenging circumstances, but I did find you got seven years. Yeah. I did find around like the six, seven year mark. I was like, man, we've been through so much And we fight so much better now. We problem solve so much better. We've really learned to pick our battles. And I almost feel like the honeymoon stage is now, minus the fact that I still am sleeping with my seven-year-old. But other other than that, I do feel like our relationship is just so good and solid. Where on the flip side, I think a lot of people, when they first get married, if they don't have kids from previous marriages, they have that honeymoon phase at the very beginning. And then all of a sudden they have kids in real life and all of that. And then they go into the hard phases. 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's silver lining. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for coming on. This was so good. What are we going to title this? What you need to know if you're dating someone with kids or don't do it. (laughs) Exactly. Get out, run. It's worth it. We think. (laughs) I mean, I'm happy. Are you happy? Yeah. I'm I'm, like, are you happy in your life? Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy in my life. You're, You're happy. Yeah, me too. So yeah, keep going, kids. You'll you'll get through it. And, and then message us. We've got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Where can everyone find you? On Instagram at the struggling stepmom. And my website is strugglingstepmom.com. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. This was good. Thank you. It was great. That's it for this one. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if this episode resonated with you, I'd be so grateful if you could share it with someone in your life who you think could benefit from it. And if you haven't already left a rating and a review on iTunes, it really is the best way to support the show. And if you're craving more real talk and coaching and community, be sure to check out my membership, the Kick-Ass Stepmom community. Head to www.kickassstepmom.com to learn more.